In this video, we're going to be solving equations algebraically. Now, in our first example, we have x to the fourth minus 3x squared plus 2 equals 0. Now, sometimes mathematical models involving equations are of a quadratic type. So that means, in general, they can be written as something like au squared plus bu plus c equals 0, where a doesn't equal 1, and then u is some kind of an algebraic expression, right? Like x squared plus 3, or something that was plugged in. And that's what our problem A is of. It's a quadratic type, okay? And we can see that because we have a squared, something squared, and an x, and then a nothing, right? A c value. So in this particular example, we're gonna do something called u substitution, right? U substitution. And so we're gonna let u equal x squared. So if I were to rewrite this, and I were to write u squared minus 3u plus 2 equals 0, that would make this problem a little bit easier to solve. Now remember that u is x squared. So really, I have x squared squared, which is x to the fourth. And I have 3x squared, which is 3x squared. And so it works out. And so we use the u to kind of hold the values so that we can solve it a little bit simpler. Because u squared minus 3u plus 2 equals 0 can be factored. So we can split this, and we see that we've got u minus 2 times u minus 1 equals 0 are the factors. From here, we'll do the zero product property, which gives us u minus 2 equals 0, and u minus 1 equals 0, and from there we'll solve. So we'll see we get u equals 2, and u equals 1. But remember that u is not done, right? We're not finished because u meant something different. So we have to re-plug in what our u was. So we're going to replace our u's with the x squared. So we have x squared equals 2, and we have x squared equals 1. And so from here, we can solve. So if we square root, we get x equals a plus or minus the square root of 2. And when we square root here, we get x equals the square root, a uh, plus or minus the square root of 1, which is really just x equals plus or minus 1. Now, if we were to plug these in and check them, we would see that they all work out, meaning that x equals plus or minus radical 2 is a solution, and x equals plus or minus 1 is also a solution. Remember that to check our answers, all we need to do is plug our answers back in for our x values and then see if it equals what it's supposed to equal. So to save time, we're not going to do that. I'm just going to tell you that I have checked them and they work out. Um, but if you want to check them, you can. That's something that we're only doing to make our video last a little bit faster so we can get through some more examples. Let's take another type of example, which is an equation that's involving radicals. So it's not really of a quadratic type where we could use u substitution pretty easily. But here we have the square root of 2x plus 7 minus x equals 2. So the first thing that we're going to want to do here is to get our x to the other side. And that's going to give us a square root of 2x plus 7 equals x plus 2. To here, from here to solve this, we'll square both sides. And that'll go away. And remember, when we square root a radical, that means that we're going to have our, our answers that we need to split out, right? So we're going to have 2x plus 7. And now this piece right here, we might need to foil that, right? So if we have x plus 2 times x plus 2, that's going to multiply out and give us an x squared plus 4x plus 4. So that is what we're going to write that this is equal to. x squared plus 4x plus 4. And now we're going to solve. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to move our 2x and our 7 over. So now we have 0 
equals x squared plus 2x minus 3. And that factors. So we can factor that to an x plus 3 and an x minus 1. And now we can simply do the zero product property, which gives us x equals negative 3 and x equals 1. And by checking these values, by plugging them in, we're going to determine that the only solution that's going to work is x equals 1. We're going to see that this is an extraneous answer. Let's take a look at another example. So here we have the square root of 2x plus 6 minus the square root of x plus 4 equals 1. Now in this instance, we're going to go ahead and we're going to add our square root of x plus 4 to the other side. And so now we have the square root of 2x plus 6 equals 1 plus the square root of x plus 4. And now we're going to square both sides to get rid of that square root. So here we're going to have 2x plus 6 equals, and we're going to need to FOIL this. Right? We're going to need to FOIL that. So if I have 1 plus the square root of x plus 4 times 1 plus the square root of x plus 4, oops, and we FOIL that, I'm going to have 1 plus 2 times the square root of x plus 4 plus the square root of x plus 4 squared, which means that will go away. We'll have 1 plus 2 times the square root of x plus 4 plus x plus 4, which is we can combine our 1 and our 4, right? So we're going to have x plus 2 times the square root plus 2 times the square root of x plus 4 plus 5. And that's what we're going to put in this spot. So x plus 2 times the square root of x plus 4 plus 5. And now we're going to try and solve for x. We want to try and isolate our next radical. So we're going to subtract 5 from both sides. And we're also going to subtract that x. And now we're going to have x plus 1 equals 2 times the square root of x plus 4. And then we're actually going to square both sides just as they are right now. So this is going to give us, that's going to cross out, and that's going to be squared. So it's going to be a 4 times x plus 4. And then we're going to need to FOIL this. So x plus 1 times x plus 1 is x squared plus x plus x plus 1. So x squared plus 2x plus 1 squared plus 2x plus 1. Then we'll distribute our 4. And that gives us x squared plus 2x plus 1 equals 4x plus 16. And we're going to move over the 4x. And we're going to move over the 16. And that's going to give us an x squared minus 2x minus 15 equals 0. And we can factor that. So we're going to get x minus 5 and x plus 3. And then we can set that up using the zero product property. So there's kind of a lot of steps to this, but sometimes that's just what you have to do. And then we need to check these, right? So by checking these values, we determine that actually the only thing that's going to work is the x equals And the x equals negative 3 is an extraneous solution. Let's do one more type. This one is involving a rational exponent. So here we have x plus 1 raised to the 2 thirds power equals 4. So the first thing that we're going to want to do here is rewrite this as a radical. So if we rewrite this as a radical, we're going to have the cubed root of x plus 1 raised to the second power equals 4. And so what we're going to do first, or rather we can even put the 2 in here, that's going to make this a little bit easier, is we are going to cube each piece because that's going to get rid of that. And so now we have x plus 1 quantity squared equals 60 
4. Now, we'll square root each side so we can get rid of our square. And that's going to leave us with an x plus 1 equals a plus or minus 8. Then we'll subtract 1 from each side and get x equals negative 1 plus or minus 8. And that's going to give us two solutions. Because if I take negative 1 and I add 8 to that, that's going to give me a 7. And if I take negative 1 and I subtract 8 from that, that's going to give me a negative 9. Now when we check these in the original figures, or in the, in the original equation rather, we see that both x equals 7 works out and x equals 9 works out. So those are some different ways to solve some equations algebraically that aren't traditional or super easy.